Welcome back. All right, so as we get ready for tonight's action, another news of the day video for all you fine people. Again, Veterans Day, Remembrance Day. Uh, so uh, the LA Kings get their player back. Fagimo was was acquired on waivers by the Nashville Predators. Nashville waves him. Now he's back in LA. Uh, if LA was the only one that, that put in that claim, they can then just send him straight down to the minors because he was theirs in the first place. Uh, and yeah, so we'll see if he plays or, or where he ends up, but, but he has been reacquired. Uh, Matt Savoy has been sent down to the WHL by the Buffalo Sabres, so the only way he can be recalled from the WHL is on an emergency basis. Uh, might be best for his development. He only played the one game in Buffalo, so guessing that this is what they've decided is best for him. Uh, they've also activated Samuelson off of the IR, so the Buffalo Sabres a little bit healthier today than they were yesterday, and Matthias Samuelson is a very useful defensive defenseman for the Buffalo Sabres. So, with the Evans Oilers and the start that they're off to, uh, the analytical community pointing out that analytically, the Oilers are playing well, meaning if you look at high danger chances for versus high danger chances against, if you look at just the various things that they look at in game about who should win, uh, the Oilers are playing relatively well and they're getting the shots, they're getting the chances. So, do you want to overcorrect? And that's the tricky part, right? Is that a GM can overcorrect or is it going to be a GM change that we see in Edmonton? So, what ends up changing? Uh, how do you fix the goaltending stop trying to take Olmark? Um, also, I saw Blues fan yesterday talking about Bennington. Yeah, Bennington's not going anywhere. Who's starting that kind of stuff? But anyways, it's just really, it's shown just how unlucky the Oilers have been so far this season. And as crazy as it sounds, they could play their way through it. The problem is, in the meantime, uh, they, they dig themselves into uh, quite the, the tough situation in terms of their chances to make the playoffs in 2024. Uh, so it will be interesting once... Uh, tonight's game is done. We'll see if there's any news tomorrow. What happens if they win that game against Seattle tonight? Does that have any influence? Or has the die already been cast? So, yeah, uh, Edmonton continues to be a discussion point on, on the daily. Uh, I haven't done a video specifically on the Oilers because it feels like that needs a lot of time. It needs me to put quite the board together for that because I've already discussed the Oilers in a video when they were 1-4-1, and one, so it feels like I don't want to just repeat what I've said before, right? So the advanced stats would definitely be baked into that in that video uh, once that does get made. Uh, and, and there are some dates coming up here this week where the schedule is not too bad. Although with the teams going over to Sweden in those early games, man, this is a rough schedule this week. And next Sunday, there's a game that starts at 5 a.m. my time after Saturday night where I'm going to be up till 12, 31 o'clock anyways. I'm thinking I may not be watching that game live. At any rate, uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see with this this coming schedule this week, which games I just tap out on and say, yeah, no, I can't do that. Anyways, uh, sleep is necessary for me to live. Uh, Samsonov gets the start tonight against the Vancouver Canucks. He has had a tough start to the season, which I talked about in a video earlier in the week. Uh, if you look at these st the statistics, whether you're looking at the fancy advanced stats or your standard stats, either way, it has not been a pretty picture for Samsonov. And maybe against Vancouver, a team that's high-flying and doing quite well, maybe he has a big game, or maybe Vancouver lights him up. We'll we'll find out in roughly, uh, what, 20 minutes' time? We'll see how it turns out. Uh, McBain is day-to-day -day for the uh, Arizona Coyotes. It is a lower body injury. This puts Travis Boyd in the lineup for them. Uh, so for the Coyotes, I mean, Boyd's, Boyd's a useful forward for them. He played well for them last season, so... Put him in the lineup, it really shouldn't have a negative impact on them. Uh, but we'll see how how things go for the Coyotes. Uh, no Lekkonen tonight for Colorado, which does not surprise people who saw that collision in the game the other night. No Cogliano either. Uh, the team's still apparently gathering information on the injury with Lekkonen. And we'll find out soon how long he's going to be out. That's not a good sign, though, when we're already a couple of days after the injury. And they're like, we're still looking at tests and trying to figure out how long he's going to be out. It's not a good sign, so... Uh, fingers crossed for Lekin and that it's not too long of a period of time, but it probably is. So I'm going to skip this here, and I'm going to go down to this one. Kucherov won't be playing tonight for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's out due to illness. Um, we know that there are certain bugs that go around this time of year. Once it gets in the locker room, it can have a dramatic effect on which players are in or not in the lineup. 
Uh, but yeah, so for Tampa Bay, Kucherov out. Of course, he's been red hot all week. So hopefully missing a game or two here and there doesn't cause that to change when he comes back. Uh, so one thing that I've seen recently, and I know I saw this a lot today with Line A being activated, is, well, why wasn't the suspension for a play on Line A? Why didn't that suspension cover the length of the injury? So there are various reasons why the NHL would find that a complete and total headache. First off, a team could potentially, let's say the injury is to a fourth-line player. Let's say it's to an AHL call-up that the team doesn't need. Well, now if it's a rival that 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 that's been that's been suspended, if it's a good player on a rival that's been suspended, leave the player on the IR, and you don't have to worry about um, that player being in the lineup for your rival. And maybe that works out well. So we already know the LTIR. There's some sketchy LTIR stuff, at least in the eyes of many fans. Uh, in terms of who is or isn't on the LTIR and whether are they really injured, all that discussion, right? Well, how much worse would it be if you are, are rooting for a team? Let's just let's just say Colton injures Meyer. Meyer's out, um, and and Colton gets suspended, and Meyer is out for say a month, and you're lose you lose Colton for a whole month as a Colorado fan. But you hear rumblings: was Meyer really hurt? So I'm using that as just an, just an example. And then there's the other side of it too. There are brutal hits where a player does not get injured, so are those no longer suspensions? And then if the answer to that is, well, those ones you can suspend them for. D Department of Player Safety already has enough headaches. There's already enough things that get thrown at them every day. And I'm not saying it's not warranted on some level, but if a suspension was for the length of an injury, there are just way too many ways that, let's say you're, you're a GM, you're right up against the cap. You're like, man, we need to make a trade here. Oh, this guy just got injured. Huh. So if he goes on LTIR and that other guy's suspended, that really helps us again if it's a rival, right? Yeah, there's just too many ways that this could just, could just be a complete and total mess. So I, I agree that suspensions at times should be harsher. I generally have not argued that a suspension is too long. It's very rare that that's the case. Uh, but I, I while I do understand the mentality behind why you'd want to see a suspension for as long as a player's out, um, not every player has the same uh, recovery time. And and in the case of Line, he's had a number of injuries over the year. He, he years he does miss time. So he, maybe he misses more games than somebody else would with a similar injury. Um, because again, not all players recover at the same time. And then there's there's instances too. The other instance is this. So let's just say that Line A was out for two games. And then came back. Let's just say he came back in that third game and realized, well, wait a minute. Um, this injury is not healed enough. I need to go back out of the lineup. So do you resuspend a player if a guy comes back from injury and then realizes eh, the injury is not healed? I need to go back and, and rehab it. So do you resuspend the player then? You go, okay, you're, you're re... Oh, no, you're not reinstated because uh, it turns out he actually is still hurt. So you go right back to suspension. We've seen that. We've seen uh, Halls come back when he's not 100%, and he ended up back out of the lineup. Of course, he's been injured again. He's not playing for the Hawks tonight. But that's where things get dicey, and it just it would just lead to too many headaches. So that's why the extent of a player's injury is not necessarily baked into the suspension. Uh, injury is part of what decides whether or not it's a suspension, but again, uh, it, it just gets really tough because there are... Times where a guy gets badly hurt on a clean hit, too. And obviously, you're not going to suspend for a clean hit. So anyways, there you go. I just wanted to talk about that because I've seen that in the comments lately about suspensions. And I thought, that's eh, a good time to address it. It's Saturday. Uh, it's a news video. Why not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.